We begin by looking at code here that, that drives the robot forward at a constant speed until it, becomes within a, it comes within a certain threshold of a barrier. So in this case, we're going to drive forward until we come within 10 centimetres of our, of our barrier or obstacle. Right, so to begin with, uh, what we've actually done here is we've developed a my block which will allow the user to set the power uh, interactively. So actually enter it via the, the brick buttons. So just quickly clicking on this. This is our code here. We've gone through this in a previous tutorial. So it's pretty well prompting the user to enter, enter the power and allowing them to either decrease the power with the left brick button or increase the power with the right brick button until they press the middle brick button to confirm the power that they want to use. So going back to our constant speed program here. So as I said, first thing they do is set the power. This is then stored in the power variable and then we wait one second. So this basically gives the, the operator time to finish clicking the button before the, the robot starts to move. All right, what we've got here then is we've got two parts of our program occurring in parallel. So notice we've got a wire from here which connects to this part of the code as well as a wire here connecting to this part of the code. So we'll, we'll describe this part first. So pretty well what this is doing is it's getting the current value of the power variable, the current distance to the obstacle to the display. So we're using our, um, our block here, sensor block, which is down here and sending that via a wire to our display block. We then wait 0.04 seconds. So we've got that's basically the refresh rate that we'll use for the monitor and then return back to the beginning of our loop again. This loop will continue for 20 seconds. We demonstrate the code in use with three separate examples. In the first example we've got it going at 80%. You can see there it breaks quite jerkily at the end there. Second example we've got the robot moving at 20%. So quite slow and steady. But we still see it overshooting the mark by about 0.5 a centimetre. Even slower still, at 10%, we've still got the robot overshooting the mark by, again, about half a centimetre. In the demos that we've just seen for this constant speed code, we can see that even at very low speeds, the robot tends to stop um, beyond the 10, 10 centimetre threshold. So at high speeds, we're seeing typically a one and a half to two centimetre difference, and in some cases even more. And even at a speed of 10, 10%, we've, we're still out by roughly half a centimetre. So what we're gonna do now is look at how to improve that stopping distance by using what we call some proportional speed. So pretty well what will happen is we'll decrease the speed the closer we get to the obstacle. So taking through this bit of code here, it's all occurring in a main loop. Uh, the loop stopping condition is checking that the robot is within the stopping distance. So we, we actually store the stopping distance within a variable. So let's go back to the beginning of the code here. We've got a maximum power that we're going to use. And in this case, we're setting that to 60, but we could quite easily set that to other values. We've got the stopping distance that we want to apply, uh, or we want to stop within the distance of that obstacle. So in this case, we have a stopping distance of 10 centimeters. In this bit of code here, what we're doing is we're um, checking the difference between how far we are from the obstacle and the actual stopping distance. And that gives us the proximity. So what we do is we take the current reading from our ultrasonic sensor that gives us how far we are away from the obstacle. We subtract the stopping distance from that and then we store that in the proximity, proximity variable here. Next, we, do, we read the value of the proximity variable and we check whether that is less than 20. And that Boolean value, that sort of true false, false value, then is fed into this switch statement. So if it's true, 
then what we need to do is we need to start decelerating. So we get the proximity, so how close we are, we look at the maximum power, and then we do this calculation here to work out what the power is. Now, without going into details too much of this, what effectively is happening is the closer we're getting to the obstacle, the lesser the power will be, or the less, less power we're going to apply. So that's what this calculation here is, and this was actually the fed into the power variable. Otherwise, if we're still at least 20 centimeters away from the obstacle, we'll just apply the maximum power. So the maximum power is then set or assigned to the power variable. Outside of this switch statement, we then read the power and then drive the motor ahead or drive the robot ahead at that particular power. So we read the value of the power, we feed that into our tank block. So we just got a tank block, which is just uh, turned on. Next, we read the, the value of the stopping, stopping distance. So that's how far away we're gonna stop from the obstacle. And then finally, at the end of our loop, we check whether or not we're within the stopping distance of our, of our obstacle uh, using obviously the ultrasonic sensor again. Once we exit the loop, we turn the motors off. So this code should allow us to come to a more graceful stop. And as we'll see in a moment in demonstrations, we'll see that it actually gets us much closer to the stopping distance than the constant speed does, even constant speed at a very low velocity. So in our demonstration here, we can see the robot starting off quickly and slowly decelerating to a standstill. And as I said, the robot in this case generally will stop within a millimetre of the uh, prescribed stopping distance. So a massive improvement.